morning. I am First Lady Cherie, and I'm so grateful that you decided to join us in our virtual worship experience. On behalf of our dynamic pastor, Pastor Marlon, the leaders and members of St. Luke, you are welcome. I would like to invite you to follow us on any of our social media platforms at St. Luke AME Waco. Again, that's at St. Luke AME Waco. At this time, I would like to say thank you for your kindness and your generosity. Because of you, we have been able to continue the work of ministry here in the city of Waco. At this time, I would like to invite you to give. You can use any of our giving platforms below. The best way to give is to go on our website, click on the Give tab, and follow the directions from there. I would also like to invite you to help us in our service project as women work together to help other women during this pandemic. We're asking for your support in donating feminine hygiene products, for donating hair care products, body products, to help serve African American women here in the city of Waco. You can make a donation on our website and specify that this donation is for women helping women. This time, I want to say thank you to the wonderful ladies who joined us in What's the Tea. Remember, you can join us as well. Every other Saturday at 4 p.m., we will gather and share the good news. At this time, I would ask that you join me as we welcome our praise team. Hallelujah. You have a word.
Yes, God is worthy of our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name is to be praised. Welcome this morning to another worship experience of the St. Luke African Methodist Episcopal Church right here in the city of Waco. I am Pastor Marlon, and I greet you in the name of Jesus. We've come to have church this morning. We've come to magnify the Lord. We've come to lift up holy hands because God is in fact worthy of our praise. I, play, I pray that you had a blessed and prosperous week. I know that many of us are facing challenges and many of us are facing difficulties. And before we jump into God's word, I want to take just a moment and I want to pray for you. I know that many of us are experiencing tests and trials beyond just the pandemic of COVID. Uh, there are many of us who are facing sickness, many of us who have lost loved ones. Tragedy seems to be the common theme. But right now, I want to pray for you because I believe that no matter what you are facing, no matter what you are up against, the God that we serve is more than able to bring you through. And so this morning, I want to connect my faith with your faith. I want to connect to you and I want to petition the throne room of heaven because I am believing God to do marvelous things in your life. If you would bow your head, close your eyes as we go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, I bless your name. God, I give you glory. I give you honor because you and you alone are worthy. God, this is a time when we as the saints must come together. We must stand in agreement and we must call upon the name of the Lord. For as we are running this race that you have set before us, there are many snares, there are many snags, there are many hurdles and obstacles that will try to trip us up along the way. But this morning we come and we declare and we decree that we have victory in Jesus. Who can stand before the Lord. No one can. Can sickness stand before the Lord? Nothing can. Can, can. can financial difficulty stand before the Lord? Nothing can. And God, we come before you this morning. God, we are believing and we are trusting and we are leaning on you to bring us through every mountain, every trial, every test. God, we are believing that you shall deliver us from the hand of the enemy enemy that you will rebuke the devourer for the sake of your people and right now in the name of Jesus I say to the enemy take your hands off of God's people I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Satan you've got to flee I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and I lose peace I lose healing I lose deliverance in the name of Jesus God God, I ask you right now to step into hospital rooms. I ask you right now to give a peace that surpasses all understanding. God, I'm asking you right now for those whose world has been turned upside down. I pray that you would step in and speak peace in the midst of the storm. That you would tell that storm, peace be still. God, we are leaning and we are depending on you. Whether shall we go? Who can we flee to? What name can we call upon except the name of Jesus? And God, we are calling on you because we need you every hour. We need you. God, we need you right now. We're asking you, God, Send down a fresh anointing. Asking you, God, to speak peace in the midst of this chaos. Our faith is being tested. And we will not throw in the towel. Our faith is being tested. But we will not give in. Our faith is being tested. And so we find ourselves at the altar asking you God to do what only you can do God we commit family members into your hands 
God, we commit our children, our educators, our administrators. God, we commit them into your hand. And we pray a covering over all God's people, both near and far, that you would be a hedge of protection. And even though we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear any evil. Because God, you are with us. God, you are the rod and you are the staff. And God, you comfort us. And we thank you for the table that's been prepared. We ask that your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. God, you know what your people stand in need of. And I pray right now that you would meet every need. And God, we pray this prayer in the only name that matters. And God, we pray in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And let the saints of God say, thank God and amen. Come on and put your blessed hands together this morning and celebrate God. Come on, come on and put your blessed hands together and celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that God not only hears our prayers, but God moves on our behalf. Beloved, I just want you to know that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. It's okay to let those tears flow because everything's going to be all right. The Bible declares that weeping may endure for a night, but watch out. Joy is coming in the morning. Joy is coming in the morning. You've got a reason to celebrate. Joy is coming in the morning. You've got a reason to lift your hands. Joy is coming in the morning. Listen, I, I'm excited and, and this is one of those Sundays that I wish the saints of God were in the sanctuary with me so I could hear the amens and the hallelujahs. But since I can't hear the amens and since I can't hear your hallelujahs, why don't you hit that heart button? Why don't you hit that like button? Why don't you make a comment and let us know that God is moving in your life, that God is moving for you right now. Come on and testify to the goodness of the Lord. Let us light up. Hallelujah the internet with the praises of the most high God come on and celebrate God this morning for God is worthy to be praised amen we've come to have church this morning and I do want you once again to get your virtual evangelism on come on invite a couple of people to come and worship with us there is a word from the Lord this morning. There is a word for you. There is a word of liberation and you need to tell somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. We, we are believing God for exponential growth. Hallelujah. Right here and right now, we are believing that God is going to grow us exponentially in every area of our ministry and we need your help to do that. We, we need your help to reach more people. We need your help to share the gospel. We were having our leaders meeting this week and I told them that our goal was growth and expansion this year. We are not going to fall back, but we are going to move forward. The Bible lets us know that the harvest is plentiful, but it's the laborers that are few. And we need you to labor this morning. We need you to convince somebody that they need Jesus. We need you to tell somebody that if they would just log in, if they would just get connected, that which they need to hear, God would speak to their heart. God would speak to their mind. God will give them direction that will pull them out of the muck and the mire and give them a hope that will allow them to press on to better things. Come on and encourage somebody somebody this morning to worship with the St. Luke family. We are believing God for growth. Hallelujah. And we need your help to do that. Get your virtual evangelism on and make sure you tell them it's about to go down at St. Luke. It's about to go down at St. Luke. We want you to, to invite somebody to worship with us. If you have not, we want you to follow us on all of our social media platforms at St. Luke AME Waco, at St. Luke AME Waco. We understand that in this 
a virtual world, the way that we connect with people, our primary way of connecting is through our virtual platforms. And that's why we want to stay connected to you. By you connecting with us, it lets us know that our ministry is reaching the masses. And we want to make sure that God's word is going out because we believe, as the scriptures say, that God's word will not return void, but it will do what it was sent to accomplish. And we do need your help. want to encourage you this morning to support the ministry through your gifts. Amen. We are believing for exponential growth in every area of our ministry. We are believing for true church growth. And what that means is we're not just looking for disgruntled members who leave one church and go to another church. And that, that's not really church growth. That's church movement. And that, that's just moving the furniture around. But we are looking for people that are unchurched. We are looking for those who are unsaved. We want to connect with people who don't know the vernacular of church, who didn't grow up in church. But we believe that there is a word for them that will change their lives and they can get it right here at St. Luke. You ought to be excited about your church. You ought to be excited about what God is doing in the life of your ministry. Hallelujah. And this is our opportunity to grow. And so we need your support. Hallelujah. We we have seen God do some marvelous things. Hallelujah. In the life of St. Luke. But we are believing God for greater. We're believing God for more. And we ask you this morning to give and to support the work that is happening here at St. Luke. We need your support to make the difference. And we thank you so much for those who have been generously giving. And those who are faithful in their giving, I'm going to challenge you to, to stretch yourself just a little bit more so that we can reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It is the power of God that leads to salvation. Now listen, there is a word from the Lord this morning. and We are going to continue in our series you are purpose. I'm going to continue in our series, You Are Purpose. Now, I know we just got through praying. Because God placed it in my spirit to pray for you this morning. But before I proclaim God's word, I understand and I acknowledge how much I need him. Preachers would be foolish to think that by putting a few words together, pushing them past the front of your lips, speaking them into existence. Preachers would be foolish to think that just mere words make a difference. Because words without the Spirit of God, they are simply a motivational speech. But when the power and the anointing of God is infused with the word that you speak, it becomes more than motivation. It becomes life changing. Watch this for both time and eternity. It, it makes a difference for your life here on earth and the life you spend with God in eternity. And so if you would quickly bow, I, I won't I won't pray long. I'll, I'll jump into the word. But before I share with you, I want to make sure I'm in touch with heaven. If you would, bow your heads. God, I do thank you for the opportunity to preach and proclaim your holy word. And I do, God, ask that you would hide me behind the cross. Less of Marlin and more of you. Less of me and all of you. God, my prayer is always simple. Allow me to preach what I believe and to believe what I preach. Because God, if I don't believe this, then I should not preach it. And I pray for your people that they will not only be hearers of your word, I pray God they would be doers of your holy word. For truly thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forever. Saints of God say, thank God and amen. Amen. If you would, uh, this.
this morning, go with me to Exodus, the first chapter. As we begin to look at part three of our series, You Are Purpose. Exodus chapter one. I do want you to know that uh, immediately following the word of God, we will share together in the Lord's Supper and ask that at the conclusion of of the sermon, you would have your bread, your water, your bread, your juice, your crackers, your water, your crackers, your juice uh, ready so that we can share in the Lord's Supper together. Exodus chapter 1 is where we are headed. Exodus chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. Exodus 1, beginning at verse 15, the word of the Lord declares, The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Puah, When you act as a midwife to the Hebrew women and you see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt with the midwives. So God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile. But you shall let every girl live. This morning, with the time that has been allotted to me to share with you, I want to speak from the thought, from the theme, I know who I am. I know who I am. In the early 1960s, a man by the name of Edward Lorenz had a revolutionary idea. When he originally shared this revolutionary idea, it was dismissed as laughable. Edward Lorenz's idea was that if a butterfly in Brazil could flap its tiny wings and move small particles of air, then those small particles of air would move other small particles of air and there would be enough particles of air that were moved that the flapping of that butterfly's tiny wings in Brazil could cause a tornado in Texas. When he shared the idea, many people just laughed. But 30 years after sharing that revolutionary idea, his idea became law. It is the law of sensitive dependence on initial conditions. And what this means is that a single act, even if indeterminately small, could cause a reaction on the other side of the world far beyond that particular moment. This morning though, I am not here to talk about butterflies. I I am not here to talk about weather patterns. But this morning I'm here to talk about making one small shift in the initial conditions of your life, making one small shift in the perspective of how you see yourself and how you see others. See, we are continuing in in our series, You Are Purpose. And this is a series that places greater emphasis on intrinsic value over instrumental value. 
because your ultimate value is not based upon what you do your ultimate value is based upon who you are your ultimate value is seen when you can distinguish the difference between seeing yourself as someone who has purpose to seeing yourself as someone who is purpose and, 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 and when that small movement takes place, when you begin to shift your perspective from seeing yourself as someone who has purpose to someone who is purpose, it will completely change the trajectory of your life. A friend and a colleague of mine sent me a message this week they sent me the message while they were watching the funeral and while they were celebrating the life and legacy of Representative John Lewis. And in the reflection that my friend sent, he stated, and I quote, it's hard not to shed tears. Another lion has left us. What I really want you to see, though, is, is how he concluded that message. He concluded the message by saying, I have to do more with this life. Pushing for outward purpose, pushing for greater purpose is so ingrained in us that when reflecting upon someone else's life, we unconsciously engage in comparison. When reflecting upon uh, the, the, the greatness of, of someone else's life, we begin to measure our value and our worth on the backdrop of instrumental value. We begin to measure our value and worth against the backdrop of what others have done and what we have yet to accomplish. The, the, the push for, for outward purpose is so deeply rooted in us that changing direction is as difficult as making a U-turn in a car with no power steering. If you've never been in that situation, God bless you. Hallelujah. But if you've ever been trying to drive a car with, 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 with no power steering, you, you know how much of a workout that can be. And the push for outward purpose is so deeply rooted in who we are that it is as difficult as trying to turn a car and, and make a U-turn when you don't have any power steering. And the reality is it, it takes so much work and, and so much effort to change direction that most people think that there are really only two options. Most people think that you either just have to press the brake on your purpose or you, either, or you either have to accelerate so that you can cover as much ground as you can. And, and though it is, is challenging, though it is difficult, you must war against the idea of defining yourself through instrumental value. And you must see yourself uh, and understand uh, that your ultimate worth and value is intrinsic. It's just who you are. See, if you begin to make that adjustment, if you begin to shift how you see yourself, even, listen, even if it is a small adjustment, it can completely change the trajectory of your life. And that's why today is the day that you've got to make the declaration like the king of pop made the declaration. And that is, I'm starting with the man or the woman in the mirror. And I'm asking them to change their ways. Because no message could be any clearer. If you want to make this world a better place, you've got to take a look at yourself and make that change. Text today is found in the first chapter of the book of Exodus. And the influence of instrumental value and the influence of a purpose-driven focus to life 
can even be seen in the naming of the book of Exodus. The English name of the book of Exodus is derived from the Septuagint, which is the Greek version of, of the Old Testament. The name Exodus is used to mark the second book of the Bible because it encapsulates the deliverance of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage and their safe passage through the Red Sea. However, the Hebrew name of the book of Exodus actually means the book of names. The, the, the Hebrew name for the second book of the Bible actually means the book of names. And it is taken from the opening words of verse 1. Exodus 1.1 1, 1 begins by saying, These are the names of the sons of Israel. And, 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 it, and it really is interesting when, when you begin to contrast where the Septuagint differs from the Hebrew name of the second book in the Bible. When, when, when you begin to look at where the Septuagint places the accent and the emphasis. See, in the Septuagint, the Greek version of the Old Testament, the emphasis is placed on the rising action that happens throughout the book of Exodus. The emphasis is placed on the deliverance of the Israelites. It is placed on their safe passage through the Red Sea. But in Hebrew, the emphasis is actually placed on intrinsic value. In the Hebrew, the emphasis is not placed on the action demonstrated through the deliverance. The, the emphasis is placed on the names. The emphasis is placed on personhood. The truth is, I almost always use the Greek name Exodus to refer to the second book of the Bible. But I actually prefer the Hebrew name. I, I actually prefer the book of names. The reason, that, the reason that, 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 that I give preference to the book of names as opposed to Exodus is because the book of names, it emphasizes personhood over action. It emphasizes being over emphasizing doing. And I don't want you to ever get it mixed up. The order is important. The order is who you are before what you do. And, and truth is, I, as I was preparing and, and God gave me this revelation, I started to get excited. And my prayer is that this blesses me as much as it blesses you. See, see, when you have been an oppressed people and when the greatest, most valiant action uh, that you can recall is your miraculous deliverance from bondage and oppression, uh, then you can begin to define yourself uh, by what you've overcome uh, and you can forget who you are. Help me, Holy Ghost. See, knowing who you are apart from what you overcome, that is true liberation. Because when you begin to look at life and, and all you've got to do is, is live for just a little while and you will realize that there are going to be some battles in your life. There are going to be some challenges that you will face that you will not be able to conquer. And what you've got to realize in the depths of your being is that in victory or in defeat, Feet. What you've got to realize is that your value is not based upon what you do. Because when you define yourself by what you have overcome, you will also define yourself by what overcomes you. Thank you, Jesus. And you are valuable, far more valuable, and your value is apart from your victories. Your value is apart from your defeats. Win, lose, or draw, you've got to know you are valuable because you are purpose. See, in, 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 in the narrative of, of who we are as a people, we celebrate how we over 
come. In the narrative of who we are as a people, we, we celebrate how we overcome. We celebrate how we overcome the middle passage. We celebrate how we've overcome chattel slavery. We celebrate how we've overcome Jim and Jane Crow. We celebrate how we've overcome segregation. But before segregation and before Jim and Jane Crow, before chattel slavery and before the middle passage, before we were overcomers, we already had value and when you define yourself by who and what you've overcome then you run the risk of forgetting who you are knowing who you are is liberating and one of the greatest blessings that come with knowing who you are is that it allows you to take joy in the gifts, graces, and beauty that is found in other people. Knowing who you are, it's a blessing be, because then you can, you can take joy in, in the gifts and graces and the beauty that is found in other people. When, when you know who you are, you, you begin to realize that celebrating someone else's success does not mean it diminishes your value. When, when you know who you are, you don't have to measure yourself against the accomplishments of others because, because you know who you are. See, someone else's accomplishments, they don't have to define who you are. In our text today, our narrator focuses our attention on three main characters. And what is unique about the way the characters are introduced is that for the most dominant character, we are provided only a title. That's it. Narrator introduces us to three characters and for the most dominant character in the passage, we are provided with only a title. But for the other two characters, the narrator not only gives us their title, but the narrator also gives us their name. The, the difference is significant because there are some people, watch this, who need a title to give them purpose. And this morning, I want to caution you that those who define themselves by their title are dangerous individuals. In our text today, the dominant character is Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Passage does not provide his name, it only provides his title. It is his title that defines who he is. It is his title that defines his purpose. And the Bible says that the Israelites were, 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 were fruitful. And because the Israelites were fruitful, they multiplied and their population increased. And because of this, Pharaoh was threatened by their presence. And so what, what Pharaoh did in, in order to preserve his title and his position, he did everything in his power to break the will and the spirit of the Israelites. First, he put slave masters over them. Those slave masters oppressed them with, with forced labor. The Bible says the more that the Israelites were oppressed, hallelujah, the, the more they multiplied and spread. See, when, when, when the forced labor could not prevent the Israelites from being fruitful and multiplying, Pharaoh entered phase two of his plan. Phase two of his plan is where we picked up in our text of this morning. Phase two of his plan was to kill all the Hebrew baby boys. He gave the instruction that when the Hebrew women gave birth, if it was a girl, they were to let her live. But if it was a boy, that baby boy was to be killed. 
it is disturbing to think about the extent that someone will go to to preserve their title and their position. Truth is, there are many people who, like Pharaoh, define themselves and find their purpose in their titles. And, and, and just like Pharaoh, these uh, individuals are easily intimidated and threatened by others. See, when your title is who you are, when, when, when your title defines you, Pharaoh shows us that you have no problem destroying others just to preserve your title that shapes your identity. But what I want you to see today is that it's really not a title that gives you purpose. Because you can have a title and still not know who you are. Remember, uh, in the Hebrew, the second book of the Bible is called the Book of Names. Now, I don't believe it's a coincidence that in the first chapter of the Book of Names that the king of Egypt is identified by only his title and not his name. Because having a title does not mean you know who you are. And that's why I, I cautioned you that, that those who find their identity in their titles are dangerous individuals. Can, can I go ahead and just be real for a second? Can, can I go ahead and, 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 and just take a moment to offend the sensitive saints? If you are a sensitive saint and, and, and your level of conviction is low, you, you might want to step out the room. If I can be real for, for just a moment, there are some pharaohs on your job. You ought to say amen this morning. There, there are some pharaohs on your job, pharaohs that go by the name of supervisor and project lead. If, if I can be real for just a moment, there are some pharaohs in your social circles. Those who think that they are the only ones that can tell a funny joke. The ones that think they are the only ones that can say something insightful. If I can be real for, for just a moment, help me, Holy Ghost. There are some pharaohs in your church. Yeah, th these are the ones who, who get mad when their name is not called. These are the ones who are threatened when they are not in charge of something. If I can be honest with you for, for just a moment, you've got some pharaohs in your family. Yeah, th those are the ones who are constantly trying to one-up you when they're always downplaying uh, the value of who you are. If I can go ahead and be honest this moment, and the truth is you might not like this, but I've got to say it anyway. Uh, uh, the truth is uh, some of you are Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Somebody just went to another page. Help me, Holy Ghost. The, the truth is some of you are Pharaoh. See, you, you have a title you have a position uh, but you still don't know who you are uh, and because you have defined yourself uh, by your title because you have defined yourself uh, by your degree because you have defined yourself uh, by your position because you have defined yourself uh, by your income because you have defined yourself uh, as the matriarch uh, or the patriarch uh, of the family uh, because you don't know who you are just like Pharaoh you will make life hard for others and even destroy someone else's life if their presence threatens you I think I say that just just one more time some of you are Pharaoh 
You, you have the title, you have the position, but you don't know who you are. And just like Pharaoh, you make life hard for others and you will even destroy someone else's life if their presence threatens your title. Pharaoh wanted to destroy the Israelites. In our text, Pharaoh is the dominant character. But there are two other characters represented that we need to pay close attention to. Two other characters in the text that stand in direct opposition to Pharaoh. And it's interesting that the narrator identifies them not only by their title, but also by their name. In our text, we are introduced to Shifra and Pua. By vocation, Shifra and Pua are midwives. Our text identifies their vocation. But what I want you to notice is that the narrator not only provides their title, but the narrator also provides their names. See, see, this is a signal that Sephra and Pua know who they are beyond what they do. They, they, they have a title, but beyond being a midwife, they know who they are. I know this is virtual church, but if you didn't shout, you, you missed your shout moment. Because one of the greatest blessings that come with knowing who you are is that it allows you to take joy in the gifts and graces and the beauty that is found in other people. See, when you know who you are, you don't have to destroy someone else to find validation for you. See, a lot of the drama that we experience in relationship, a lot of the drama that is experienced in churches. A lot of the drama that takes place in families is a result of the personal internal struggle for identity that creates an inner frustration that is then projected on those who are closest to us. And that's why Marvin Gaye sang the song, Everybody Wants Somebody to Be Their Own piece of clay. Uh, uh, Marvin Gaye said, uh, that's what's wrong uh, with the world today. Uh, everybody wants somebody uh, to be their own uh, piece of clay. Uh, and that's why I believe uh, that God led me uh, to this passage this morning. Uh, I believe that's why God led me uh, to this passage uh, with Shephra and Pua. Uh, I believe that uh, because their personhood, uh, because their intrinsic value value can easily be overlooked and overshadowed by the courage they display in our passage. See, when Pharaoh gave the command to kill all the Hebrew baby boys, Shifra and Pua, in an act of civil disobedience, ignored the command of Pharaoh. Now, now the bravery and the courage displayed by Shifra and Pua it should not be associated with their title or their position as midwives. The courage they display should not in any way be associated with their title or their position as midwives. You see, courage is an attribute of character. Titles and position they don't possess character, only people possess character. See, the courage they displayed was not because of their title nor because of their position, but the courage they displayed was the fruit of knowing 
who they were and whose they were because courage is in fact a fruit of knowing who you are and whose you are the Bible says that they feared or they reverenced God and they didn't do what the king said they didn't do what the king told them but instead they let the boys live got to pause right there uh, because what they just did in allowing the boys to live, uh, it is the sign that lets you know who you are. That's why I got to pause and slow down just a little bit because I don't want you to miss it. What they did in allowing the boys to live is the sign for you to know and recognize if you have come to grips with who you are. Bible says they let the boys live. Means that they were so comfortable with who they were. They were so comfortable in their own skin. They were so comfortable in their intrinsic value that they had reached a place in life where they could help other women give birth to what God had placed on the inside of them. Hallelujah. I, I, I hope somebody said amen. Uh, uh, Shifra and Pua were so comfortable uh, with who they were uh, that they were not even focused uh, on making a name for themselves uh, because they already knew uh, who they were. Bible says, watch this, that because the midwives feared God, that God gave them families of their own. Oh, that's a blessing. Oh, that's a major blessing. And the implication of the blessing, watch this, is that before God rewarded them with a family of their own, they were willing to die so that others could flourish. See, if, if, if God rewarded them with a family, it means that while they were investing in others, it means while they were sacrificing and helping others bring forth what God had placed in them, if God rewarded them with the family, it means while they were investing in others that they didn't have children of their own. Some, 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 some of my Bible scholars and Bible readers, you, you know where I'm going with this because to be a woman in that particular day and to be without child, uh, it was a social stigma. Children were a sign of God's blessing. Children were a sign of honor. And, and Shifra and Pua, they had no children. Oh, but it's a blessing because Shifra and Pua understood that their ultimate value was not, not defined by what they did. It was not defined by what they didn't have. See, they were not defined by their title as midwife, nor were they defined by the fact that they didn't have any children because they knew who they were. And a sign of knowing who you are is being able to bless someone else a sign of knowing who you are is being able to celebrate someone else's successes and today help me holy ghost it's time for you to make a change today is the day to take a moment to take the focus off of you and learn to celebrate someone else see when you know who who you are then you can empower others when you know who you are you can celebrate somebody else and it's time to move past the mindset of why them and not me it's time to move past 
fake smiles that mask our inner frustration because when you know who you are you can celebrate others because their success does not diminish who you are and today is time to make a change because even a small change will move your life in a new direction so why don't you just take a moment this morning and begin to thank God for somebody else why don't you take a moment this morning and begin to thank God for somebody else come on and thank God for your cousin that just got engaged come on and thank God for your co-worker that's moving on to bigger and better things come on and thank God for your friend that is now pursuing their dreams and living out their purpose why don't you take a moment to bless God for someone else's breakthrough come on and take a moment to bless God for someone else's deliverance come on and thank God for opening doors for somebody else see the blessing of knowing who you are is that it allows you to take joy in the gifts graces and beauty that is found in other people and when you know who you are you don't measure yourself against others accomplishments but you thank God for blessing them also and watch how our God moves things watch how our God works things out Shifra and Pua they helped to preserve the life of the Hebrew baby boys and then it turns out that a Hebrew baby boy in the person and personality of Moses would be the one that God would raise up to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage now watch this it is Moses who is attributed with writing the first five books of the Bible and when Moses wrote the second book of the Bible guess whose name received honorable mention guess whose names got highlighted in the first chapter see when you know who you are you don't have to make a name for yourself because those that you invest in they'll shout your praises and they'll celebrate you for all that you've done you don't have to compare yourself uh, to anybody. Uh, you've just got to become comfortable uh, with who God uh, made you to be. Uh, and I dare you right now uh, to bless God uh, for somebody else's blessing. Uh, I dare you uh, right now uh, to give God glory uh, to bless uh, somebody else. Uh, because when you can bless others, uh, it's a sign uh, that you are confident uh, in who God is. Uh, made you to be ah Jesus it, it's a sign that you are confident in who God made you to be listen this morning I, I want you to know you are not in competition but we work in concert we, we are not in competition, but we can celebrate each other. Because when you know who you are, you don't measure yourself against somebody else. Because when you know who you are, you're not afraid of someone else's success. Listen, I, I want you to know this this morning that the greatest blessing that you, that I could ever receive is when on the cross of Calvary a man named Jesus invested in you. He invested in me. He, he, is, he, he is one who though he left his throne in glory and took on humanity and became one of us. He never lost sense of who he was. 
because he knew from the beginning who he was he was willing to sacrifice so that others could be blessed this morning I want to invite you into relationship I want to invite you into a relationship with a man named Jesus I want to invite you into a relationship with somebody who has complete and total confidence and has already demonstrated his love for you Listen, I know that life is full of challenges. Life is full of difficulties. But you don't ever have to second guess yourself. Because a relationship with Jesus, it, it not only secures a place for you in heaven, but it also gives you the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. So that those things in the natural that, that weigh you down, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you can overcome. You don't have to define yourself by those things that you defeat. Because the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you will let you know that you are valuable. This morning, I want to invite you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you've never accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. Acknowledge that you're not perfect. Believe that Jesus died on the cross and was raised on the third day. And then C, you confess him as Lord and Savior, and you can be a part of the family of God. And this morning, if that's something that you have done for the very first time, we need to know because we want to connect with you. And all you've got to do, and we thank God for those who just last week rededicated, and, and we are praying for you, and we thank God uh, for your public, your public confession. But if, if you want to get connected to the body of Christ, if you say, today is the day I want to give my life to the Lord, you can uh, visit us on our, our website, St. Luke AME Waco org, And right there on the home page, you can leave us a message. As soon as you go to the website, right there on that home page, you can leave us a message and we'll respond to you. Or you can simply add a comment on any of our social media platforms and we will we will get back with you. If you are looking for a church home, this is the place to be. If, if you want to be reaffirmed in who you are, if you want to be a part of something special that God is doing, God is doing amazing things right here at St. Luke. If you are looking for a church that will invest in you, this is the place for you to be. And we want you. We are expecting you. We have prepared for you and we are ready to serve. If you are looking for a church home, that means you're looking for a place where you can uh, become a member and you can have a church family. St. Luke is the place to be. And we want you as part of our family. If that's you, just visit our website. Once again, stlukeamewaco.org. Leave us a message or just comment right here. Comment right here. And we want to welcome you to the family. Listen, before we, before we take our and share in the Lord's Supper, I want to encourage you and invite you once again to support the ministry through your giving. Listen, the, the sign that you know who you are is when you can bless others. Your gift to the kingdom is one a sign of faithfulness because God said bring all the tithes into the storehouse but beyond that tithe that offering that you give it is an investment into the life of this ministry into the life of others and if you know who you are if you know who you are 
I, I want to invite you at this time to give unto the Lord. If you know who you are, I want to invite you right now to give unto the Lord. Just like Shifra and Pua, because of who they were, could act courageously. And then we can see, uh, we can see uh, their, their gift of themselves being reciprocated. When Moses writes the second book of the Bible and names them, the Bible said you can test God and see. If he won't open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings, you don't have room enough to receive. What I'm trying to tell you is that when you give to God, I'm a living witness. That God will give back to you. I want to move quickly, but, but before I do, I just want to testify. And this was a difficult season for me. In, in, in mid-March, I was laid off from my job. It was a couple of weeks before I could even tell people that I had been laid off. There were so many challenges and so many concerns that I had being laid off in the midst of a pandemic. As I was going through the process, negotiating with my former employer, employer a severance package, and I got my severance package, and guess what I did? with my severance package, not knowing if I would have a job in the future. I paid my tithes off of my severance package because I believe, because I know who I am, because I know that God will take care of me. This week, God did it in the midst of a pandemic when organizations are laying people off, when companies are in the midst of a hiring freeze. This week, God did it. God opened another door. And I was offered a position, watch this, making more than what I was making before. I, I, I'm just trying to tell you that you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. If you know who you are, I want to encourage you uh, this morning, give unto the Lord and watch God change things. Amen. Let us now prepare for the Lord's Supper. Let us now share uh, in the Lord's Supper. The solicitation. Uh, you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God by meekly kneeling upon your knees. If you are able to I do ask that uh, in your homes or wherever you are, if you can take a posture of humility as we prepare our hearts and minds to share in the Lord's Supper. The General Confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who have your great mercy, has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, 
and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For it is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, and we shall at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink of his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice Oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we, receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. Gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat this. This is the body which was broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of it. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us share now in the Lord's Supper together. The broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Broken for you and broken for me. So that we could have a right to the tree of life, I eat. What shall wash away my sins? What should make me whole again? It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. I drink. Amen. Having renewed your covenant, you may rise, go in peace, sin no more. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare now to leave this time of worship, but never from God's presence, let us receive the benediction of the Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May the love of God surround you. 
And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be your comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week.